What's up guys, Damien Keyes here, welcome back to the channel. So, we have all heard horror stories when it comes to hiring PR companies for your new single campaign. Stuff that makes me sit there with my head in my hands, wasting thousands of dollars. So today, we are going through the ultimate guide of everything that you need to know when hiring a PR company for your next release. So firstly, what does a PR company do? Well, it has changed and morphed slightly over the years but traditionally, PR, public relations, has always been there to build your reputation through things like newspapers, magazines, radio, and TV. But nowadays, as the digital side of things has built up, now you're also dealing with social media and playlists and podcasts and vlogs and blogs uh, and even influence. So many different avenues that you can go down and some of them even deal with Facebook advertising. But here is the golden rule when it comes to PR companies. You are paying for their expertise and you are paying for their time, which means you are not paying for results. As much as they're gonna tell you that they can try and do this and they can hopefully get you that, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. What you're actually paying for is the time it takes for them to do it using their expertise, which means if nothing happens, nothing happens. But how much should you pay for a PR campaign? Now, a campaign will probably be around a single, could be an EP, could be an album, and therefore could last anything from four weeks upwards if it's a single. But how much should you pay for that? Well, you could go and find someone who just dabbles in PR and probably is a journalist or an ex-journalist who wants to get their hands dirty when it comes to music because they have a passion for it. And if they're a lone ranger, then maybe that'll cost you a couple hundred dollars, let's say $500, which means what they will be doing for that is they will be writing your press release and sending your press release off. They will be contacting playlists. They will be doing their best to get your music in different places or your story so that you can then talk about it and getting your music out there. But it could cost you millions, millions and millions of dollars per month. How come? Well, if you're dealing with a worldwide strategy, in that point, when you're thinking of the top of the top artists, then you know, you've know you gotta have your own docu-series on Netflix, and on top of that, you have gotta have that interview on Ellen and Jimmy Fallon and Saturday Night Live, and on top of that, you need to have some influence, so you need to be on David Dobrik's YouTube channel, and all of this not only costs a lot of money, but it it takes a lot of people a lot of time to do all of the logistics. So therefore, you are paying a lot of money to take over the world with your release. So this depends on how much money you've got and what you're trying to do with your release because a couple of thousand dollars isn't going to do that much when you're dealing with PR and very experienced people. So when do you need a PR company for your release? Because artists go in way too early usually. Usually I've written this song, let's get a PR company and take over the world. And it's not that simple because you need momentum, you need a story, you need reasons to be able to get your music and your story out there. Because if you don't have that, can you imagine it? We are surrounded now by 10,000 ads slash messages every single day. So why does someone want to have you on their radio show? Why does somebody want to have you on their TV show or their podcast? What is it that is your leverage? And you saying, well, I've got a new single out, or but I really want to get my music to people, that just isn't enough. There are over 40,000 tracks uploaded to Spotify every single day. So how are you gonna stand out? And it doesn't necessarily just have to be the music. You are after building a connection with a certain type of person. So what's the connection? What's the story? What can you do to build that connection? So way back in the day, whilst we were building BIM, we knew that we needed to get into the press. And at the time, we were paying thousands and thousands for a PR company who would work for us every single month. And I remember those meetings where we're all sat around a table and there is very, very few things on the table. There's no magazines. And we're thinking, we just paid a load of money. So one month we were like, right, that's it. We need to get a story out there. We're the ones who need to create a story. And at that point, there was this idea that was 
was going to be a world record. The world record for the most amount of guitar pedals that we've ever done. So we got all of the students to come down, bring their guitar pedals. We had this huge stack and we plugged them all in and we got someone from Guinness World Records to come down and validate this whole thing. And the idea was they had to play Smoke on the Water and it had to be audible. It had to be recognizable. And after about 98 or 99 pedals, I think it just sounded like a fart in a jar. But it didn't matter because the amount of press that we got from that stupid stunt of getting into the world records with a stupid idea meant we were everywhere. We were in every guitar magazine. We were in, um, we were in the local paper, on the local radio, even some local news stations were covering this and it was just a stupid idea. But that's what PR and press is. It's how can you attach something interesting to the thing that you're doing? So how do you find a good PR company in 2021? Well, that's a good question because whilst there are some absolutely fantastic PR companies and PR people out there, there are also plenty of bad eggs who give a bad name to the entire industry. And I'm sure because 2021 is gonna be a struggle because 2020 was a pig. So therefore the barrier to entry is gonna come down. And what you don't want is you don't want someone saying, yeah, of course I can do all of these great things. Just give me that money. And three months later, you're sat there with no money and maybe a couple more streams of Spotify with nothing else to show for it. So there are a couple of warning signs, things that should flag up emergency when you hear these. Number one, it's a great time to release music. Is it? Is it really a great time to release music? We've just had the largest pandemic, we can't tour, and every single record label is sitting on music that it's about to release all at the same time. Is it really the best time to release music? So therefore, it's not about whether it's a good time, it's about what are you gonna do to navigate the fact that it isn't the best time? What are you gonna do to help me get through this noise? And the next thing, blah, 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 radio, one, blah, 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 today's hits playlist. These things should be ringing alarm bells, especially if you're in the early days. Now, this idea of playing on desperation, of getting, wow, this music's really good. I think we can get this on Radio One. Wow, really? That sounds huge. That sounds amazing. That sounds like I'm gonna get millions and millions of streams. Oh, a month later, yeah, we didn't manage to get it on Radio One. Yeah, today's hits weren't that interested after all. Whew, I did try though. I did everything I was supposed to do. But at the beginning, you don't wanna be dragged in with this little carrot of excitement, of desperation of, I think this is gonna be amazing. All you've gotta do is pay me a bunch of money and then you're off. So shop around, make sure you are going to multiple PR companies and grill them. What are you gonna do? And not just, everyone says, you gotta ask them, what have they done in the past? Well, I'm sure they've had a couple of hits. I'm sure they've done some good stuff. That's great. What are they gonna do for you? And how much do you get them? Because the fact that they might have had a hit from two years ago, that's great, but they might have also had 40 or 50 or 60 grand put into that. You just don't know. I wanna know, what do I get? What are you gonna do for me? What are you gonna do for my music? You wanna know everything about the campaign and the goals. What are the targets? What publications are you going for? What playlists? What are we trying to do here? Because I wanna know what we're trying to do and how we're gonna do that. And on top of that, how we're gonna report. If you don't do your due diligence and then you get ripped off, at that point, if you've not done that due diligence, it's on you because it is so easy for a PR company to rip you off if they want to by just putting some, some bands up that you've gone, oh, we got five million plays on this. Brilliant, show me how, show me what you're gonna do. Help me to get my music out there. And how are you gonna maximize the work of this PR company once you've hired them? Well, firstly, you're gonna get your shit in order, which means your social media needs to work. And by that, I don't mean you've got Instagram, you've got YouTube, you've got Facebook, and I think I've got a Twitter somewhere. I mean, you are going to build this audience, you are gonna bring people into that party, you are gonna look after them, you are gonna be making content every single day. You are building something on social 
specials that gives people the proof. When they come in, they are stuck. You are making a crab's net. They come in, they can't get out again because it's so damn good. They come in, they stay. More people come in, they stay. More people come in, they stay. It builds and it builds momentum. Otherwise, what's the point in having the PR company? If you don't have that, what happens is people fall through the net. They go across to Spotify. Hey, I've got you this big playlist. Oh, fantastic. You've got another 100,000 plays. Brilliant. What happens next? I don't know. I don't know who they are. They've just gone. I can't retarget them. That is unacceptable. We have to bring people in. If your socials aren't finished, if they aren't a party waiting to bring people in, you are going to struggle long term. Then, decent photos, decent videos. This is on you. This is not on a PR company. And after that, you want to be putting out a couple of singles yourself so you can learn about this process. And most importantly, when you hire a PR company for the first time, dip your toe in the water. Get them to do one song. Don't go straight in at an album or an EP because that's going to cost a lot more money and you need to dip your toe in the water and it's you that needs to dangle the carrot. If you do well with this one, maybe we'll move on to the next one. But don't just sell out straight away. We've got this album. It's all yours because at that point, you are at risk. I'm dealing with musicians every single day. And when an artist tells me, yeah, we've just hired a PR company, I feel a bit sick. I've got that feeling in my stomach. Oh no, please God, don't get ripped off. Are you ready? Have you done everything that you need to do? Have you learned how this works? Do you understand what they're gonna do? Do you understand what's needed of you? Do you understand the whole process? Oh my God, if this doesn't work, you could lose thousands. Because if you understand the industry and social media, you can use that money. That's what this is about, Priority the money. If someone gave me five grand and said, get this single out there, and I'm looking at all of the ways, I'm thinking, I could do a lot of damage with Facebook ads. I can really bring people into my party and look after them and then push them across and get them back again. I can do damage if I know what I'm doing. So therefore, if I'm giving that responsibility to someone else, I'm worried. So the time to get uh, to get a PR company in is when you have your shit together and you're thinking, this is growing out of control. Now it's about expanding it. But if it's not working properly and you have to look within your heart for that, if it's not working, then it's not the right time. Leave other people do PR and you concentrate on just looking after small amounts of people and I promise you they'll grow. You look after five or ten people so well with music, with performances, with stories, with messages, that will grow. And if that grows and you can go from 10, you can definitely get 20. You can definitely get 100. You can definitely, if you get 100, you can definitely get 1,000. Therefore, you can scale it exponentially. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you can do me a massive favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe and that notification bell because 2021 is going to be a big one. We are going to be putting some huge content out over the next couple of months and if you are deadly serious about your music and you are looking for more strategies and more ways to build your audience and get your music out there, then why don't you come and check out DK Music Business Academy. Not only is there a roadmap of seven hours worth of content to help you build to a million streams on Spotify, but there are plenty of other courses to help with all other avenues of your music. And on top of that, you get two hours of live sessions with me every single week and a community of amazing musicians and I'm so proud of the musicians who are in there and what they're achieving. So if you want to check that out, the link is in the description, dkmba.com. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.